Hi, I'm Curtis Brown from Texas Instruments, and I'm here with Esther Brunat. She's a high school math teacher from South Florida, and we are here with another Smart Space video. This time we're going to be talking about ellipses and circles. So, Esther, will you take it away? Absolutely. So, we've already talked a little bit about conic section, so we're going to focus just on ellipses and circles right now. So I made them spin around the screen for no good reason at all. <laughs> it's entertaining. That's cool. I know. <laughs> okay, so let's focus on ellipses. Um, so we already talked about briefly in another video about just when the center is at zero, zero, right? So we're going to talk more about, like, what are the transformations of this? So our... Uh, equations have gotten a lot more complicated this time around, but not that much more complicated. So our new values that we're going to be focused on are our H values and our K values, which tell us where the center of the ellipse is, is going to land. So basically what transformation did it, did it, did it do, right? So I have an ellipse, we, you know, we have ellipses that have vertical major axes and then horizontal major axes, but they have all the same parts that we talked about already. So this is one with a horizontal major axis, um, and then we have our vertices and our co-vertices. HK is known as our center, okay? And then I have our foci. Can't forget about those because that's the whole point of an ellipse. And then I have my uh, horizontal, or not horizontal, our vertical major axis, okay? I have our center, I have vertices along the major axis, co-vertices along the minor axis, okay? And then of course we have our foci on the major axis. That's an ellipse in a nutshell. So what we're gonna do, Curtis, okay, is given the general form, right? I have it, I have a equation, okay? We have H values, K values. Based on what we know already about ellipses and about transformation, what can we gather and what do we think is going to happen based on this equation? Wow, you've got a lot of stuff in here that you snuck in on me here, okay? So I wanna talk about a couple <laughs> of things here. All right, so first of okay. all, I've noticed as we've been talking about these ellipses that whenever you talk about the A value, all right, which was our, our major mm -hmm. axis, talking about the major axis, so that's the longer one. So that A value right. is a larger number. Whenever that number seems to be underneath the Y value, I'm seeing that we have a vertically oriented ellipse. In other words, this particular ellipse, I expect, to be longer vertically than it is horizontally. So that's my first guess, all right? Second thing I need, there you go. I think, all right? And you're gonna show this picture and then it's gonna be the other direction and that's gonna make me embarrassed. So here's the second thing, all right? So the second thing that we notice is that our H value, which is our horizontal shift, we learned that uh, before, our H value in this one is three. So I'm gonna guess that this center of this particular uh, ellipse is going to be shifted to the right three units, right? And then finally, I see that, that my K value is one. So that means I, I, I believe that this value is actually going to be translated down one unit because I see that that is uh, Y minus one there, right? So I caught that. Um, and it's kind of works the same way that our X minus H worked in, in those other problems that it, really I have to think about okay, so how do I get it back to the original range values? And that's why I would have to subtract yes. one, right? So I'm going to say that this one is translated uh, down one unit. No, it's up one unit. I'm sorry, up one unit. <laughs> <laughs> Great, so we yes. have our center, the HK. Look at you, winging it and killing it. <laughs> so three car one right you there almost the got me on We love to see it. <laughs> I know I threw a lot at you without giving enough detail there, but you're you're an all-star student, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so the first the first thing I'm gonna look at is that A value that Curtis was just talking about, right? It's the bigger of the two, and it's under the Y. So I know that that's gonna go up and down, right? So 36 
the A value, this value that's blue on the screen, that 36 is A squared. So for me to figure out what A is, what's gonna happen is I'm actually gonna take the square root of 36, which is what, Curtis? Um, six. It's really minus <laughs> six, right? <laughs> What'd you say? I said it's really plus or minus six, but we're interested in only the positive value. Yes, we are technically plus or minus, but I like, I look, I see what you did there. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my B value, which 16 is B squared on the screen. So to find my B value, I'm going to take the square root of 16. And then that's going to go ahead and give me, or I had to graph my, my vertices. It's going to give me a four. So I have my vertices that were six spaces up and down from the center. And then I have my co-vertices, which are four spaces uh, left and right, okay? And then, swoop, it's a beautiful, beautiful ellipse, okay? Nice. Now, we're gonna talk about going the opposite direction, okay? So Curtis, I know I threw a lot on your plate before, but now you've got to extrapolate even more. <laughs> oh my goodness. So just by, <laughs> just by me giving you this graph, what do you think you can figure out just by looking at that picture? Well, I'm really thankful, first of all, that you put the equation over there on the left-hand side, because I can see um, that this is vertically yes. oriented <laughs> and I can see it based upon the equation that you have there for me. So I, I really appreciate that. So I'm going to go, i um, going to kind of walk through this a little bit uh, at a time. First of all, the center okay. of this ellipse. The center of this ellipse uh, is at positive three, zero, right? So I have three Perfect. right in the x direction, and I have zero as my y uh, shift. So I'm not moving up or down in the, in the y direction. So my h value, it appears to be three, and my k value is zero like I, I see there. Thank you for showing those before. You I, are I correct, you. sir. <laughs> nice. All right, I didn't embarrass myself there. All right, so the next thing we need to look at are the, are the, the horizontal um, and vertical axes, right? So I see that my vertical axis is much larger. So the vertical axis, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, so I see that, that my vertical um, major axis is seven, well, really times two is 14, but the A value is going to be seven. Mm -hmm. so A squared is 49, all right? And then my B value looks like one, two. Um, so my B is two, so B squared would be 49. So my equation would be Y squared over 49 plus X minus uh, three, squared over four equals one. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Off the dome, ladies and gentlemen, like no hesitation whatsoever. Just, I'm here for it. <laughs> I do what I can. I do what I can. <laughs> you did. With the knowledge that you had in your hand, you delivered. We love to see it. <laughs> so I didn't even have the answers are... here in front of me. You did it. <laughs> so I love it. So those are ellipses in a nutshell. So transitioning from ellipses, we're going to go into our special case of ellipses. Ooh. What are our special case of ellipses? So the special case of an ellipse is when the two foci are the same. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to just like jump out on a limb here. And I'm going to say that, wow, we're going to take those two foci and we're going to bring them together and put them right on top of the center. And then our major and minor axes are going to be equivalent. <gasps> and that would give us a <laughs> So just like Curtis just said, this is a special case of an ellipse where our major axis and our minor axis are the same. So in this form of a circle, I have my H values and I have my K values that demonstrate a transformation. So my center is no longer going to be at zero, zero, but it could be wherever H and K lie. And then R squared is going to be our radius squared, obviously. So 
I could move my center wherever I want to. In this case, I moved it down on space. That's our HK. And then our radii um, are equidistant from the center. That's what we love to see when we see a circle. Okay. Um, vertices, co-vertices, not really. Any, cent any point from the center is the same. <laughs> okay, so describing, yes. I wanted to make a comment. Because I was looking at the equation of that circle that you've got there, and you can show me, it's fine to show it on this one. So check it out. Mm -hmm. I noticed that all of our ellipses were x minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared or a and b squared switched equals one, right? So if I took yes. r squared and I just, you know, like divided by r squared, mm -hmm. I'm going to get equals one and I'm going to have x minus h squared over r squared plus y minus k squared over r squared, which is exactly what we were talking about where a and b are equivalent. Like, so, wow. Yes. So cool. It makes sense every direction <laughs> on wax paper or not, on equations or not. <laughs> it just makes sense. I love that. Um, I'm going to remember that when I teach that. So I have an equation. I have x minus 5 quantity squared plus y plus 4 quantity squared equals 25. Okay, Curtis? I'm throwing right. it at you again. <laughs> All right. Here we go. I got what this. Got? All right. So I, you've given me h and k pretty directly, right? So h is 5, mm -hmm. k is negative 4. Ooh, did you see what I did there? I saw you have plus 4, so subtracting k would have to be negative four, right, to get the plus sign. So, so my center is going to be Absolutely. five, negative four. I could have gotten the hint by your picture over there on the right-hand side, but I figured uh, <laughs> that you weren't trying to trick me too much. So positive five, Not negative yet. center. And the radius, um, well, let's see, r squared is 25, so the square root of 25 is plus or minus five. We don't really talk about negative distance, like negative radius doesn't make a whole lot of sense here. So we're gonna use positive radius of five. All right, so I'm thinking R is equal to five. So I should have this nice little circle that goes around, all right? And just barely touches the Y axis, all right? And then goes above the X axis, one unit up above there. Perfect, and that's exactly what we have when our graph comes up on the screen. We love nice. to see it. So you now, you know we did it forwards. So in math, if you can go forwards, you can go backwards. So That's right. Okay, so now we're working. Here we go. Yep. Oh man. <laughs> so you got me on the, okay. So I can count out my H and K, right? So I see that I've translated the center from the origin four units to the left and three units down, right? So my H is going to be negative four. My K is going to be negative three, all right? So that would look like in my equation, X plus four squared plus Y plus three squared, right? So that's gonna be the left-hand side of my equation. The right-hand side, R squared, now I've got to count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I see that my radius is seven. Right? Okay, so my radius is seven, so that means that r is seven, that means that r squared is 49, so oh, my equation should be x minus, be. say that again? I said should be, yeah. Should be, it should be x plus four squared plus y plus three squared equals 49. Drum roll. Let's see. Ta da! Did we do that correctly? Yeah. <laughs> you totally got on the fly there. There you go. <laughs> so that's that's it for circles and ellipses in a nutshell. We went forwards, we went backwards, took talking about our transformations and applying them to the equations. And, and then taking the graphs and making the equations, taking the equations, making the graphs. And that's it. Well, this was a whole lot of fun. And this was really, really cool. Thank you so much for those visuals. Those were really great. And thanks for putting me on the spot for those challenges. I hope I didn't mess them up too bad. It sound like we got them, uh, yeah. I got them right. 
uh, on effortless. <laughs> effortless might be a questionable thing, but anyway, we have a lot of fun <laughs> having you here, Esther. Esther, and um, we're super excited to see you again for the next Smart Space video. So we'll see you next time. Bye.